Hey, welcome back to TechMaker. This is Building an Ethereum Wallet with Ruby Part 2. In the last episode, we got set up with almost everything that we needed and we tested that our connection to the Ethereum network was in fact working. In this episode, we're going to take that a little bit further. We're going to um, load up a list of smart contracts that we're going to interact with and we're going to start to build out the idea of keeping track of different balances of different tokens for a wallet. Back in the documentation for our Web3 ETH gem that we're using, I was reading through this and I realized we missed one little bit of setup. Um, it's not actually totally required, but it makes life a little bit easier. So we're going to go ahead and do it, but it's this Etherscan connection. So Etherscan is the website we've been using to look at different transactions and so on and so forth in this course and in the Exploring Ethereum with Web3.js course, or series rather. and um, Essentially, what we need to do is register for an API key so that we can query and get ABIs from various smart contracts. So um, if you jump over to Etherscan and go to etherscan.io slash APIs and click this link to the client portal uh, API key area as they're calling it, um, it'll prompt you to register, go through the process, and then you'll have the ability to create an API key so I went ahead and created a fake account to show you how this works. So if you click this, you can jump in here. You have to register and so on and so forth, but you'll get to this point and you can click the big create API key button. I already did that and I gave mine a name of Ruby wallet. And then this is my API key. So once you have that, copy it. And we'll go ahead and paste that in our application of YML. What this is going to do is give us this Etherscan API key as an environment variable. Okay, so back in the terminal, we'll see how this works. I'm going to jump into the Rails console again. and I'm just going to cycle up to my last thing, so I was just testing this. So what we're going to do is say API equals web3 eth etherscan.new env and then pass in your Etherscan API key in a string like that. So once we run this, we will get a connection to that API. Something that I always like to do, um, and this is kind of just a side note, when I'm exploring new things like this, I always like to say methods false. This is a Ruby way of basically looking at all the methods you can call that are defined directly on an object. And this is kind of interesting because you have this method missing, which means there's some meta programming happening here. So you can't directly look at what there is. So I went back and looked at the documentation and it looks like we have something where we say api.contract get abi. And then we need to pass in a symbol of address and then we need an address to go here. So I also grab the address for the ZRX token contract and we'll do that one. And that gives us back the ERC20 contract ABI. So if you don't know what an ABI is, I went into a little bit more detail in the Exploring Ethereum series. Um, but basically an ABI is application binary interface. So this is sort of uh, this is a, a set of data that tells us what functions are defined on a particular smart contract and then we use that information to interact with the smart contract. So what we can actually do with this information, so another little handy Ruby trick uh, is we can say ABI equals underscore and that will set it to the last thing that was returned. So that makes our uh, data set inside of this ABI variable. Uh, that only works in the terminal. I don't think you can do that like in regular code. Um, so then what we can do is say um, contract equals, um, let's see, what is it? It's dollar sign web three because that's the variable we have that stored in. ETH dot contract ABI. So we pass that in. And so that will create a new contract instance. And then what we could actually do is we could say ZRX equals contract dot at, uh, and then we need the address, which is gonna be way up here somewhere. Okay. Okay, so now what we ought to be able to do is say like, ZRX dot total supply 
which will run a function against the actual Ethereum network. Um, and that's gonna should come back as a billion times 10 to the 18. So like a billion with 18 zeros after it. And I believe that's the case because that would be a thousand, that would be a million, that would be a billion. And then I'm just gonna say that's 18 zeros. Um, but yeah, that looks right. So back on Etherscan, I'm on the token page for ZRX, and basically what I want to do right now is just get an address of somebody who's got some ZRX tokens. So I'm just going to drill down until I get to somebody that does. So I'm going to copy this address. So finally I can say of and then pass in that address that I just copied, and hopefully it's going to print out some number. So apparently that person has a lot. So let me check what's going on here. So this is another cool site called Ethblur, and Ethblur does a similar thing as Etherscan, but you can get some kind of different information just a little more easily. So I'm pasting in that address that we were looking at, and I just noticed that it's got 10,000 ZRX. So that kind of shows you that when you see all the zeros, it can seem a lot bigger than it is, but that's actually accurate what we pulled back. So there's just a couple more things I want to point out. So first of all, if you're wondering why there's 18 zeros behind the number, um, that's because the base unit on Ethereum is Wei, which is 1 times 10 to the minus 18 Ether. So basically it's like the penny of the Ethereum network, but just a very, very tiny fraction of 1 Ether. And a lot of tokens implement the same sort of system so for example, ZRX has 18 decimals also, I believe, which is why, you know, 10,000 would be here, and then all of the rest of this is just like decimal places. So that's one thing I wanted to address. The other thing I wanted to mention has to do with um, what we were doing earlier when we, when we pulled back the ABI. So we pulled back the ABI from the ZRX contract, but ZRX adheres to what's known as the ERC-20 protocol. So we can actually reuse that ABI for different contracts. Um, it may have been a little confusing the way that we went through that, but if it was, go back through it again and also check out the Exploring Ethereum series because we go in a little more depth over there. Um, and that might help you get your head around it a little bit if you're confused. Okay, so on that note, we actually are going to jump into the code base, but I need to get my ABI because we don't want to have to query that every time we want to talk to a token because all or most of the tokens are going to are gonna use this ERC-20 interface. So we really don't want to load it up from the API constantly because it's slow. So we just want to go ahead and store it somewhere. So I'm going to copy it and paste it into the code base. Okay, so what I'm going to do is open up my app folder inside of the Ruby Wallet directory, and I'm going to create a new folder just called lib. And inside of here, I'm going to create another folder called tools. And then I'm going to create a file inside here, and let's call it uh, contracts.rb. So if you're not familiar with Ruby, some of this may be a little strange, but just keep following along and hopefully it'll make sense. So we're going to do, the first thing we're going to do is say module tools, and then inside of this we'll say module, uh, actually let's do this, let's say class contracts and then we'll just create a constant called ERC20 ABI equals and then we will paste in all of the stuff we had and then what we'll do is we'll jump back in the terminal and just make sure this worked okay so let's jump into the rails console again and let's just check that our top level module got added and it did not. So I think the reason for that is there's a tool coming, a, a tool running called Spring if you're using a newer version of Rails. And I think you have to stop it sometimes if you add a directory or something. I honestly don't understand it, but that's okay. 
Um, so if you run rail C again, we should have tools. So it's loaded up. So we can do tools, contracts, and then we should be able to do, uh, because it's a constant, you call it the same way. So you say ERC 20 ABI, and we get our ABI back. So that's great. So back on ETH floor, we have this list of the top tokens. If you go to slash top, and I'm just gonna grab a few addresses from this. I'm gonna do it off screen so that you don't have to be bored. But I'm probably gonna get about five addresses just to start kind of experimenting out what we're gonna do here. But I want you to be aware of where I'm getting these. So that's what this is for. Okay, so we're back and I've added several tokens. So basically what I've got is I've got another constant called tokens in an array. Each array, or the array has a hash for each token. Um, and then there's three uh, attributes of the hash, name, ticker, and address. So I just grabbed some of the top ones. Um, I don't necessarily vouch for any of these tokens or whatever, but they're all in the top 10 or 20. Um, so what I want to do is basically create a function or a method that's going to take in an address and tell us what the balance for each token is. So actually I think I need to, there's a bunch of ways you could do this and I'm just going to try one way and we'll see what happens. Excuse me while I fix some formatting. So we have module, module, and then we are opening up the so-called eigen class. And then we have three ends, so that's good. It's okay if you don't understand what any of that means. We just want to define a function that says, uh, we'll say get balances, and then we'll take an address. And what we'll do is we'll say um, contract equals um, web3 dot eth dot contract and then we'll say erc20 abi and then what we'll do is we'll say tokens dot each do token so for those tokens we're going to iterate through and we're gonna look up the actual uh, token. So we'll say, um, let's see, um, how can I say that? T equals, that's a terrible variable name. I'll find a better one in a second. We'll just say contract dot at token address. And then what we'll do is we'll say, uh, Put balance of, and we'll just use the ticker, so token ticker, and then we'll say um, t dot, what was it, balance of, and then um, address. Right, because we're getting the address from there. So we've got that. And then I like to put some like uh, separators in here. And I misspelled ticker, so that's going to blow up. So this should let us just jump into the console and run tools, contracts, get balances, and then give it an address. Now, if you're thinking like this is really disorganized, you're right. And before we actually uh, do anything serious, we will reorganize things a bit. I'm just creating a place to get started at the moment. I made a little bit of a coding error right here. So this is the only thing that needs to be in the self. Uh, so what I'm just going to do is say self dot get balances, which makes that a, a class level method on the module. Um, then the rest of this stuff I need to reverse indent and then I need to get rid of one of these ends. And then 
the last thing I need to do is actually in here, I need to say tools uh, contracts like that. And then I'll need to do the same for tokens, I believe. Okay, cool, that should be good. So now back in the terminal, I'm gonna jump into the Rails console again. And now I can run tools, um, what do we call that? Contracts dot get balances. And then I'm gonna give it an address that I just found. It's just somebody's address. Um, and it's gonna look up each and every one of those and it's gonna tell us they have some EOS, some TRX, some ZRX. Um, and then it's going to return out uh, the data set that it processed. Okay, and then back in ETHFLOOR, this is actually the address. And if you were thinking, oh, that looks like quite a lot of that stuff. Well, they have $3.1 million worth of crypto on this address. Um, that is 237,000 ZRX, which I believe is what we saw. I'm going to look down for EOS. Did I miss EOS somewhere? Hmm, where did that go? It's right there. So they have 14,000 EOS. So the strategy that I'm going to choose to take is basically to build up a list of known tokens. And we're going to have the entire list and we're going to make it where that is stored in the database. And so if more tokens are added in the future, you can add them. Potentially we could scrape them from somewhere. So there's different strategies behind that. But at any rate, what we're going to do is we're going to have a list that's stored on the back end. And then what we're going to do is whenever someone enters an address that they own, we're going to look through all of those addresses and see what are the balances of each of those tokens that they have. And from there, we're going to build a similar thing to what we're looking at with ETHBLOR, where you can actually see like what is the US dollar value or different currency values from that. So that'll involve working with some other APIs. So that's definitely what we're going to do next in the next few videos. After that, I'm going to try to work out some different strategies where we can turn this into a really fully functioning wallet so that you can actually execute transactions from here, which involves all sorts of crazy security concerns, and I'm not going to promise that it's going to be perfectly secure or anything like that. You need a team like Coinbase to really do that or the Ethereum project or whatever, so... That involves a whole big discussion, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to show you things that are possible, and then we can look at you know security solutions later. Um, but again, I just wanted to preface that before we get too far into this. Like, uh, security is its own concern, and then like just kind of how to do things is another concern. Um, how you could possibly do things, and then you can iterate towards better secure solutions. So that's it for this episode. Um, like I said, we've got. A bunch more episodes coming up for this. If you like this, be sure to just subscribe to the YouTube channel. Subscribe on TechMaker TV because there will be even more stuff over there. Please click like if you're on YouTube. Click the bell button. All those good things, and I'll talk to you next time.